But y'all, I am excited about this message I'm going to be bringing today. I said message. Yes, I did. I'm a pastor. I can't help you but say message. Huh? Y'all ready? Oh, we about to get it started on here. Listen, FYI, I have my wife holding down the, the soundboard, so she's going to be answering your questions. I can't see it. And I got my beautiful bouncing baby boy, Cameron Adonis Ballard, who was 11 months and some days. He in the building. So if you hear him making some noise, that's just him saying amen and hallelujah. Okay? I got a special guest in the room with us, Katie Orr from Chicago, y'all. That is my beautiful daughter. She is 20, and she is expecting her first baby. So can y'all say congratulations, Katie Orr? She's going to be having my first granddaughter ever. This is my first grandchild. She in the building from Chicago. And I want y'all to say congratulations, Michaela. Come on now. Help pass her out. Got me sweating in here like a slave with no papers. It's good. Okay. How we looking beautiful? We got enough people in the building. are pouring in thank you everyone thank you we're at 20 viewers 20 viewers hallelujah praise god we only had 25 register we're gonna get it popping and cracking because y'all here to hear a great message today and the name of this workshop is how to attract your dream girl now before we get started i want to say a quick prayer father god i just want to say thank you for all those that are in attendance today give them a special blessing lord because they came to hear your boy preach a word today i ask that you open up their hearts and let them be able to receive what i have for them speak through me lord god and let this message ele elevate the men and women of god so that they can be better stewards over what you have given them to build your kingdom. In the name of Yahshua, in Jesus' name, amen. Let me get an amen if you're ready for me to get started. Now, I'm going to give me a little drink of libations. Okay, y'all? This is water. This ain't gin. Water is nature's gin. Mm, get a little bit of that, that good water. Because I got a message for y'all today. All right. So let's get started, shall we? Now, I know a lot of men signed up for this, and I'm thankful that they did because this is a topic that I hope uh, will bless your soul, how to attract your dream girl. And I just want to let you know why I call it attract your dream girl and not get your dream girl because you can't get anybody, all right? Everybody has a free will. And we don't teach no manipulation and witchcraft. You can't get anybody, but you can attract them. So I called it how to attract your dream girl. OK, so let's go. Listen, if y'all haven't done this already, please make sure y'all subscribe to my channel, because sometimes, you know, people be hating and they flag our account for whatever reason. And we want to make sure you guys keep in touch. Now, we had about 2,000 people on last time, and they said that they was going to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and only eight did. So listen, don't be lying to the Holy Spirit, okay, people? Please subscribe to our YouTube channel so we can bless you guys. Thank you. Please thank you. All right. Let's get this party started. Today's topic in my master class, what I want to do is we want to, uh, what you're going to be learning in this class is myths about attraction, okay? You're going to be learning Pastor Michael's four C's to getting your dream girl. Now, this was for men, but ladies, if you resonate with this, I want you to say anytime I say something that you agree with as a lady, I want you to say, Preach on preacher, okay? Preach on preacher. Now, if you agree with it. Now, if you don't agree, I want you to say, hold up now, pastor. Okay, y'all got it? Preach on preacher if the ladies hear it. And hold on now, pastor, if it don't hit your spirit, all right? And number three, and this is the number one surefire way. This is my bonus one. So make sure you got to stay to the very end to get this Number one, surefire way on how to attract your dream girl, okay? So let's get this party started right now. Fellas, all right, 
I want some participation now. And I'm a preacher, so you got to preach back to me in the comments. I want you to tell me if you're single and if you've been trying to get, a, get somebody in your life, what has been one of the, some of the reasons why you think you have not been able to land the girl of your dreams? I want some comments. My wife is going to read it. I want you to tell me now what are some of the reasons why you think you have not been able to land your dream girl? I want to know. I want to know what your mind is, okay? Give me some of your mind. I want to know what your mind is. Tell me why you think you haven't landed your dream girl. I need about five of y'all to give me some comments now. Come on now. Preach back All with Right, me. we got Legend 6620. Yes. Women choose, not men. Mm, okay. That's good, Legend. I'm going to have to bring you on preaching now. Give me some more, y'all. Why do you think you have not landed your dream girl? And I want you to be real. I want you to be real. I want you to be as transparent as possible. I need about two or three of y'all to give me a comment on why you think you have a land of your dream girl. Now, this is a workshop. I know we on Zoom, but I need you guys to talk back to me. Hmm? TikTok. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> my wife my wife corrected me. I said Zoom. TikTok. I know we doing teleconferences. Y'all know what I mean, okay? Any more comments in there, baby? Right, I do have a request from uh, Anna Thomas, 3753, just asking, uh, what are we doing? What is this about? This is a, a workshop on how to attract your dream girl. So I've, we've been registering this all week. So this is for the men who um, want to know how to attract their dream girl. So that's all what right. that's about. We have another answer yes. from Kendall Timmons. Women's standards too high. All oh, right. Okay. Okay, high standards. Any more? Give me one more. Give me one more, fellas, on why do you think you have not at uh, uh, attracted your dream, girl? We got high standards. We got women be doing the choosing. Give me one more. I want somebody to talk back to Pastor Michael on why. And if you're a lady, you can answer it too. You know, it's okay. But I want one more. Give me one more. One more. Preach back to your boy. And you can answer twice if you, ha if you can. Alisa. All right, we have Legend 6620. He says, men have raised their standards. Men have lowered theirs. So I think he may have made a typo. Mm -hmm. um, if you could repeat that so we know what you mean by that. He said men have raised their standards. He said men have raised their standards. And men have lowered maybe theirs. Maybe women have lowered theirs. Okay, he corrected. He said, sorry, that women have raised. Nope. Women have raised their standards and men, men have, have lowered, lowered theirs. Their. Oh, okay, interesting. Okay, well, let me go ahead and get some more information, you guys. So I want to get it going. Um, we, have, we have some. That's just my son, y'all. He kicking. Right, we got a loving French. And men are not being themselves. Men That's from not, a lady. Men are not being themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Now, I'm going to give you guys uh, about four or five top reasons why men have said it's hard to attract women. Some of the thoughts that go along inside men's minds on what they think women want, why they think they're not able to get a woman, well, get a woman, things like that, okay? So we're going to go through a couple standards. Here go five right now. Fortune, a lot of men think that they haven't attracted a woman of their dreams is because fortune. They don't think that they have the finances uh, to attract the type of woman that they want. Physique, a lot of men think that they don't have the body type to be able to attract the woman of their dreams. Size of your manhood. There's a lot of men who feel like that women, uh, they, don't, they don't measure up in certain departments, and that's the reason why they haven't gotten the woman of their dreams. Putting them on a the pedestal, a lot of men feel like um, they have to put a woman on a pedestal. They don't feel like they want to jump through those hoops to be able to do that to a woman. Also, vanity, okay? A lot of women think that women are vain and that they want these guys to look uh, pretty. They want these pretty boys, um, you know, with the fancy cars and, and all of that. Anything that has to do with vanity. These are five of the top reasons why um, a lot of men feel like 
um, they haven't attracted the woman of their dreams yet. Do any of these, do you agree with any of these, huh? Get, name some of the things that you agree with. Like, give me one or two that you say, you know what? I can see that. Right? Give me something that you, or something you've ever heard before as a reason to um, why it may have been an issue uh, with getting your dream girl. Does any of these stand out to you guys? Give me some, some comments. Give me some feedback. Give me some feedback. Dior says, yes, all, especially fortune. Okay. Of a nanny X, one, two, three, four, five, six. I will date the fry guy if he's a nice guy. With me on your team, you will have your own franchise. Look at that. I like that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. And right. by the way, fellas, these are myths. All right. Women, let me ask you, women, women that are in the room, these are myths. Fellas who feel like this is something that's stopping them from having a woman of their dreams. Go ahead, babe. Comments from Sean Russell. He says, even in marriage, these doubts come up. Mm, good. Good one, Sean. Good one. Okay. And we got Kendall Simmons. Kendall Timmons. Yes. Says all of them. All of them. Yeah. Yeah. But let me tell you guys, these are myths. These are myths. This, this is myth. Women, they want you to be able to take care of things, but they, you don't have to have, in, in, in general, have to have seven, eight figures. To, to find a woman of your dreams, right? Because most women are not gold diggers, all right? They're gold diggers, G-O-A-L. They're not gold diggers. They're gold diggers. If you have goals, that's more attractive to women. Women, if I'm, if I'm telling the truth, women, can I hear a preacher on pastor? Can I get a preacher on physique? Now, now, this is varies for a lot of women, but you don't necessarily have to have six packs and all these great, you know, they say dad bods are in, fellas. Just want you to know, ladies, you know what I'm saying? They say dad bods are in. But men think they've got to have all these muscles and be this Olympic gold medalist to be able to have this body. Um, size of a manhood. Again, you know, a lot of these guys, when they look at certain movies, they're thinking that all them women want these guys. that be swinging and knocking them out of the park, right? Let me tell you something that my wife told me. She says, the reason why a lot of men have this in their mind is because they don't know what it's like to have sex from a woman's point of view, right? For some reason, they, they think that having this huge manhood is what women want, but they don't know what it's like to sleep with a man. So they have no clue on what that really feels like. So that's the thing that's in our mind that want to have this huge manhood to be able to satisfy a woman. Here's a science fact. The G-spot the, the is only two inches into the, the opening of the vagina. So God worked it out. So even if you got three inches, you should be able to take care of your woman. Now, I'm just saying from a medical point of view. Now, preference is one thing, right? Do I got some comments? Anybody? Then we have putting them on the pedestal. Women want to be respected, but they don't want to be made an idol, all right? Women don't want to be worshipped. Now, if you're with a woman that wants to be worshipped, then you have, that's a problem going on. But most women don't want to be worshipped. They want to be respected. They want to be loved. But you don't have to put nobody on the pedestal because the problem when you put somebody on the pedestal, it's a long way to fall, okay? And then vanity. You want pretty boys and all this stuff. You think women want these pretty boys? You listen, I grew up in the day when genuine with the baby hairs laid to the side and you had light skin with the brown eyes and you think that that's what the women wanted my wife told me she don't want no man that's prettier than her she don't want no man that's spending more time in the mirror than she do right she want to be the apple of the eye in the center of the relationship right I'm not saying that she want a booger wolf right but i'm saying is you know that whole idea that you have to look at this beautiful very super attractive male to get a woman all those are myths all right we're going to move on because what I want you guys to know, men, any man out there that feel like you are not enough, okay, before we can move forward, I want you to know something. What 2 Corinthians 4 and 16 says, it says, therefore, we do not lose heart. 
Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For those men that are having problems, anybody that's having an issue, especially my brothers, we're trying to attract the woman of your dreams and you feel like you don't have uh, that beautiful person that you that the society say you should have and you don't measure up. I want you to understand that the outward is dying every day. OK, and we live in a world where we got Instagram filters. We live in a world where we got catfish, fried fish, tilapia, all type of fishes on the Internet, fake profiles creating this fake illusion that you got to look a certain way. But the Bible was saying, listen, you need to be in God because when you are in God, you are renewed day by day. And that is way more important than the things that happen on the outside. You understand what I'm saying? So I want you men to know anybody that's on this thing to know that it is about who whose you are. And what you are doing to develop who you are as a believer, as a kingdom key, as a king's kid, before you can move on to the next level. You understand what I'm saying? Praise God. Can I get an amen for that? If if, if you feel that, let me hear an amen if you feel that comment. Huh? We got some amens in the building? Come on now, I'm trying to teach you. We got all type of fish in this sea. And it ain't real. Some of some some of these, huh? Some of these catfish you need to throw back in a in a lake that you that you didn't call, huh? How my attendance looking? We'll be looking like. Good, good. Listen, guys. This is what we here for, right? This is the question that has sparked the why I'm doing this workshop. Okay, this is the question that a lot of people. When me and my wife first started putting out our videos and we started going live and we started touching the world and, and, and letting the world know who we are, this is the main question that a lot of people had. Some have texted me, some have messaged me, some have verbally said some things. So, and this is one of the reasons why we hit it. At. Here's the question I know everybody want to know is, how did this guy get that girl? I know that's what y'all want to know, right? How did this big dude get this beautiful young lady, right? Here's a picture of me and my wife uh, back in the day. We was about, ooh, this is about 13 years ago. And I've known this, my wife, for a very long time, right? And I get a lot of comments. There's a lot of them, you know, some of them are very negative and, 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 and rude and nasty. You know, they say things like, you too fat to be with a woman like that. Or how do y'all even have sex? Uh, you must got a lot of money, right? And normally when people say that, I learned something. Those comments are more about them than they are about me. Because when you hate on somebody and say those things, you don't even know who we are. That talks about your own brokenness and your own hurtfulness, okay? So we got these questions because people wanted to, you know, say these nasty things about me about my wife, about us, because they don't understand what love is. They don't understand what, 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 when God puts somebody together and they say some hurtful things. However, you know, that's, that's me and my wife back in the day. Here's my wife lately. Now my wife, she's beautiful. Yes, my wife is beautiful. I, I, I put her on display because I want to show my wife as a model. She's an actress. She's an activist. You can see her in all three roles. So men are always trying to come for me. How did I end up with somebody like that? But those who, a lot of my big guys who um, really had questions because they were doubting themselves, they see me as a bigger guy and they see that I have a beautiful wife, they really wanted to know. So I wanted to really do this for them and anybody who ever felt like they wasn't good enough to have somebody to love them and respect them. But for all those haters, for all those haters that's out there, let me tell you, you're going to always have haters. No matter who you are, no matter what you look like, I see them hating on dudes with muscles. They say, well, you ain't did your legs, or you must be shooting up. Like, somebody always going to say something about you. So no matter how you look, you going to have haters. But you know what? It's okay. Because I want you to always remember that when someone hates on you, it is not about you. It is more about how 
they feel about themselves. Because you don't have to put somebody down low. If you, anytime you have to put somebody low to make your own pride feel good, your own ego feel good, that's a reflection on you. So I wanted to do this for those people who have ever been hated on because of how they look or because they didn't measure up, okay? I want you to know that's all right because God loves you and it's more important than how you feel about yourself, all right? So if you guys want to know, here's my first point on how I got the woman of my dreams. It was because of God, right? Now, that was, now, that's really the, the, the main reason God put me and my wife together. And when you're on this journey to find the person of your dreams, you need to make sure that it is in line with what God wants for your life, right? Now, I've dated models and actresses um, before. I mean, my wife would not allow me to put any other pictures up of who I've dated in the past because I don't feel like sleeping on the couch. But I've never had a problem dating or being with someone who's beautiful. If you, my, all my children are gorgeous. All my children can be models. God has blessed me to be able to produce some beautiful children. I've had some beautiful people in my life, right? And it wasn't because I had the money. You know, of course it wasn't because I have a six-pack, because as you see in that picture, I've always been a big guy, right? Okay? But I just want you guys to understand, you know, I want to show Cam. Let me, let me, let me, let me, I want to show y'all I'm beautiful, so I'm going to show them later. I'm going to show them later, because God has blessed me. I'm a beautiful Beautiful family, right? And it wasn't because I, I had a six-pack. It wasn't because I had money, all right? Hold on, real quick. Let me show y'all. Hold on. Hold on. Look, look. Look at this kid. Look, look, look how gorgeous. Look at that, baby. Say, hey. Say, hey. Look, look what God gave me, huh? Look at that. Look at that. That's how blessed I am, big or small. Mm. All right, put it back with his mama. Huh? I just wanted to show you guys how good God is, regardless of what people think about you. But God blessed me. God gave me my wife. God gave me my beautiful children, my beautiful daughter back in Chicago who models, my handsome son, you know, big or small. I just want to let you know it is God that gave me the family that I have. You know, I want you to understand that. But I'm going to give you some practical things as well, because that's what you guys came here for. How are we looking in that room, baby? My question is to the men who want to find the woman of their dreams. And most times when we say the woman of our dreams, we're looking at someone who's beautiful, aesthetically, got the body, got the shape. The question I have before we even begin to break down how to attract a woman of your dreams is why? Why do you want somebody that's attractive? Why do you want someone with this bad body? Why do you feel that that's what you have to have? Now, I'm just talking to those ones who, who that's what they look for. There are some people who are not, you know, who don't care about those things. But I'm talking about most of those guys, when they come for me, when they say what they do, they see my beautiful wife, and they want that. And I always ask, why do you want it? Why do you want it? Why do you want this woman? All right? Let me give you some uh, uh some information about attraction. How are we looking, baby? Any questions coming? All right, here we go. Attraction becomes the distraction that keeps people from confronting their deeper issues, thinking errors, and fears. An attractive partner becomes the measure of their success, a personal reflection on themselves, and a statement of their love ability. This is a very powerful statement that we I deal with with a lot of clients a lot of clients that I've dealt with I've been counseled for a very long time then with relationships and mo nine times out of ten most times when you are a guy I'm talking to the men here when you are looking for someone that's super attractive that's fine that got all this body it is because you're trying to be distracted from your own issues somehow you feel like being with someone that's quote-unquote attractive becomes a measurement of you being successful, right? It makes you feel that you're more likable and lovable because you're with someone that's attractive. I'm going to be transparent, and I know this is true because that's how I used to be. When I was growing up, because I've always been a big guy, I always purposely would go after the most attractive women because I felt like, Hey, 
that would validate my worth. That would make me feel better about myself if I had the baddest B on the block, if I had that bad girl, right? That's your boy. I'm being 100% transparent because I could be real about it. That's how I felt about myself. And it became a real, it was vanity in a lot of the women that I did date that were quote unquote beautiful, but they didn't have no substance. They didn't have anything going on for themselves other than they were beautiful. And because of that, listen, if being with an attractive person was the solution, then why do so many singles walk away from relationships with highly attractive partners stating that they simply don't feel a connection? How many people in this room have ever been with someone who was quote unquote attractive, but it didn't work out because you didn't feel a connection? Say, that's me. Can I get a truth? Can I get some truth in the room? Can I get a that's me, pastor? Because that's the truth, right? You would date people. Listen, my wife, beautiful as she is, she's dated celebrities. She's dated millionaires. She's dated models. But, and when I say dated, I ain't saying slept with. I want y'all to get that right. My wife wasn't sleeping around with nobody like that. But she gave people opportunities, different ethnicities and races. And guess what? Who she landed with? Who, 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 who flow her boat? Who she say is her soulmate? Huh? Huh? Teddy bear over here. Remember now, I'm still a bear. Because it wasn't about what they looked like, about all the money that they had. There was no connection. Can I, is somebody going to be real in the room and say that with me? Have you ever dated someone who was attractive and there was no connection? Because I want you guys to understand when you try to attract, we got some, we got some real people in the room. When you're trying to attract somebody that's a very attractive, and I want you guys, especially men, to know women, they start dating, a lot of women dated these guys that were very attractive, but they was jerks. They were abusive. They didn't know how to treat these women. And they started saying, I was set up for someone who loved me more than what they look like. You understand what I'm saying? So I want you guys to understand that when you're trying to look for someone that's beautiful, there's no connection in there, okay? And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with wanting to be with someone that's attractive. If that's your jam, that's your jam. But when you're doing it just because they're attractive and you're trying to hide and fix something that's inside of you, that's a vanity, that's, that's an idol, and there's no glory in that. It ain't going to work out, all right? So listen. 1 John 2.16 says, For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, comes not from the Father, but from the world. You hear that, people? When you get into this vanity and lust and trying to be with someone because of what they look like, I'm telling you, that's, that's that spirit that don't come from God. Okay? That spirit don't come from God. That's coming from someplace else. And I want you to check your spirit. Check your spirit before I give you any of these tips, before I give you the secret sauce. Make sure you know why you're doing this. All right? Check your spirit, people. Don't be trying to... Well, I'm going to give you some secrets. I'm going to give you some ways on how to get that. Get the girl of your dreams and some of the women get the guy of your dreams. But you better check your spirit. You better make sure that that the spirit that that is calling you to have this person, that that spirit is coming from God and not from the devil, not from the world. OK, check your spirit. Because let me tell you something, fellas. When you start searching for these beautiful people. These, these beautiful people that society is telling you to be, for, be with, those Kim Kardashians, those Megan the Body Stallions, and all this lust that they, they setting up for you, you're going to get an unrealistic expectation, and it's a setup to destroy your masculinity. Let me break it down. Let me, let me tell you why it is dangerous. This is what I've learned, that we don't search... We, we are attracted to what we think being with this person is going to feel like and how it's going to make us feel about ourselves, right? So we have this unrealistic expectation that if I be with this girl because she looks like this, her body is like this, then it's going to feel like this when I'm with her, right? And guess what happens? When you stop, when you don't measure up 
to getting what society is telling you you should have as a wife, as a woman, you're going to destroy your masculinity. You're going to start feeling like you don't measure up to what the world is telling you you should have. And you're not going to feel man enough. And this is where a lot of toxic mas masculinity comes from is when you're trying to become what the world is telling you is masculine to live up to expectation, especially around trying to attract something that's beautiful. And you know what happens to a lot of men who don't live up to this expectation of masculinity? Depression. Depression sets in because you feel like you don't measure up. Listen, we're going to get to the secret sauce, but I want to get some realness because a lot of men right now are dealing with this because they feel like because they don't look a certain way, they don't make a certain amount of money, they don't have the certain type of woman, they're single, they can't find anyone, you get into a state of depression because you feel like you don't measure up as a man. Can I get any? Because I felt like that. I, I was searching so hard trying to find someone that looked a certain way because it was a status for me. And when I wasn't, you get into this depression state. Can I get anybody that's going to be real and say, Pastor, as a man, I felt like this. I felt like I didn't measure up sometimes when it come, came to women, when it came to what society told me I should be and what I should have. Because this is real, people. Men, we deal with depression because of that. Do I got any comments and I got any real? Is anybody stepping up saying this is me? Praise God. Thank you guys for being open and honest. Because before we can get to what you want in life, you got to first assess where you are in life. Okay? Checking your spirit. This is all about checking your spirit, fellas. I want you to be ready for when it's time for you to God to bring you what you're supposed to have. I want to make sure you're ready from a spiritual standpoint before you go to the next level. You heard me? Now, we checked our spirits. We understand the myths. We understand what we think women want. And we understand that that's not what they really want. We got our spirits right. We understand that God is getting us ready for who we're supposed to have. I'm going to give you guys, Pastor Michael's, four C's on how to attract the woman of your dreams. And I want to make sure y'all ready for these four C's. So you're going to write them down, screenshot it. And can I get a, I'm ready for the four C's, Pastor? Uh, give me get one, I'm ready for the four C's. Come on. Y'all got to talk back to your boy, Pastor. I'm up here. Let me know y'all still with me. Do I get I'm ready for the four C's? Let's get it. C number one. Character. Character. Let me define what character is for all y'all players that want to go to the Webster Dictionary. Character is who you are when no one else is watching. Character is who you are when no one else is watching. See, it's easy to put on a front when you got an audience. But real character is when the cameras are not on, when your TikTok ain't on, when you're not going live, when you don't have a crowd, when you're not at work. Who are you when the lights are low? Who are you when no one else is watching? That's character. You got to develop that guy. Do you like who that guy is when no one else is watching? Because it's, the Bible says that you ought to love your neighbors as you love yourself. So who you are is going to attract who you want to be. Make sure your character is in shape and that you like who your character is. Here's the second C. Confidence. Confidence is being okay with who you are right now. You understand what I'm saying? Now, let me give you a hijack. If you are someone who's a gamer, be confident in being a gamer. If you're someone who's a poet, be confident in who you're a poet. Be confident and dominate in the area of what you love. 
dominate in the area of the gifts that God is giving you. That's how you get confident is dominating in the area and what you love to do. Don't be confident. If you're not a bodybuilder, don't try to be confident in the bodybuilder. If you're a painter, be the best painter you can be. If you you know, if you're a gamer, be the best gamer you could be. If you're a writer, be the best writer you could be. Dominate in the area that you have the gift in. This is where your confidence will grow. Okay? Charisma. Charisma. What your swag be like, player? Huh? Listen, if you quirky and silly and goofy, that's your charisma. Don't try to change who you are. That's a part of your confidence. But it's your part of your charisma. It's that thing that makes you unique and different. It's that swag. It don't mean you have to have money. You can be odd. Be the charismatic odd person you ever need to be, right? Be charisma in who you are, where you are. And here's the fourth one, chemistry. Now, this really do pertains to being the, the dopest person that you are, right? This will elevate your chemistry, right? There's a lot of awkward people that are very attractive and they are super awkward. I know some, let me tell you something. To some degree, everybody is awkward. Everybody is awkward. I don't care what anybody say. To some degree, everybody is awkward. But when you talk about chemistry, making sure that you click with this person is super important when you relate. When I got with my wife, we, we clicked. We had chemistry, even as friends. We had chemistry, and that is so important. There's nothing worse than going out on a date with someone who's attractive and there's no chemistry. And you know what? People will push it. They will push it just because they want to be with that person. All right? All right? So let's recap real quick. The four C's of attraction, character, confidence, charisma, chemistry. Character, confidence, charisma, chemistry. Those are the most powerful four C's to when it comes to um, attraction. All right? That's Michael's, Pastor Michael's uh, secret sauce. But I got one more that's important. But before I finish these four, I want you to know all four of these add up to this. Instead of trying to find someone to be with, spend your time being somebody that somebody wants to be with. Now, I'm going to say it again for the people in the back room. Instead of trying to find someone to be with, spend your time being with somebody that somebody wants to be with. If you develop your character, your charisma, your confidence, and your chemistry on point, the person that you're supposed to be attracted to, they're going to have a hard time not trying to be with you. I think we spend so much of our life trying to be with somebody instead of being the person that somebody wants to be with. You have a way better selling point when you dope. You have a better selling point when you've, when you've mastered those four C's. When that person comes around, you don't have to try to convince them to be with you. They're going to find it extremely hard to not want to be with you. Can I get an amen? If that resonated with you, can I get an amen, please? Can I get an amen? Do I got some amens in the building, baby? You got to get some amens. Stop trying to be with somebody. Spend your time being the best somebody that somebody wants to be with. Man, that's so much more important and valuable than trying to be with somebody. All right? Now, here we go. I'm about to give you the number one important rule for attracting your dream girl. This is super important. I'm talking about if y'all don't hear nothing else I said today, I'm about to drop the bomb on you. And I want you guys, if you got to pull over to hear this one, pull over. All right, here we go. Here's the number one important rule. But before I do that, would you please support what we do? Okay, listen, guys. This is how Pastor Michael support his family. This is how I support my living. This is how we uh, being able to, to bring you this word, to bring you these events. 
We don't, you know, the, the, what we dropping is just some sauce, y'all. Would y'all please support? You can either go Cash App or if you check our bio in our link, we have a link tree bio that just went up. Donate to what we're doing. If this message has been a blessing, listen now, you, if I'm feeding you, if I'm giving you something good, support your boy. Support Pastor Michael. Me and my wife, we help take care of the families. We help uh, give date nights to families. If you guys just want to support uh, marriages and, and, and our content, we just ask you guys to support $1. Anything to go to us to be able to bring you guys more content. I know you like, he didn't went past on me. Yes, I did. Because the Bible says that we are uh, deserving of the gifts that we give. So if y'all want to be a blessing to me and my beautiful family and help me and my grandbabies, that's how you can support us. Okay? All right. All right. I just want to throw that out there. But I'm still going to give you the number one important fact that you guys going to need. All right? Here we go. Men. In order to attract the girl of your dreams, you got to have a dream. You have to have a dream. That's the secret sauce. That's the secret sauce. How I really met my wife is that I was working in my purpose. I was working in my purpose and my wife was working in her purpose. We both had dreams. And if you want to attract the woman of your dreams, you need to be in your dreams. You need to be working in your dreams. Because, for example, if you want to be an NBA ball player and travel the world, if you start dating somebody who's a doctor and you don't know that you want to play the NBA and then you start dating this doctor, then you mess around and get drafted to the NBA and now you got to make a choice to leave or be with this girl who you think is the one for you. You may have some conflict, right? Because she probably, you didn't meet her while you was in your dream. You met her while you was, you know, doing your own thing. It's so important. I tell men this all the time. Find your dream. Work your purpose. Be in your destiny. Before you start to try to date or be with anybody, this is so important. When you want to know why you need a dream, because your dream girl is going to be find you in your dream. Your dream girl is going to find you in your dream. So if you don't have a dream, if you don't have a plan, if you don't know who you are, you shouldn't be trying to find nobody anyway. You want to know why? Let me go Bible. Because God will not present you a help me until you have something for her to help. That's, you see, Adam was busy in his dream, in his purpose. And then God interrupted him and presented to him his Eve. That's what happened to your boy, Pastor Michael. I was in my dreams when I met my wife. If I was not working in my purpose and she wasn't working in her purpose, we would have never had a reason to meet. Because me and my wife is uh, 10 years apart in age. I'm older than my wife. We don't hang with the same people. We didn't grow up in the same neighborhoods. I didn't meet her. Be the only way I met her was because I was on set filming my movie. I'm filming a music video because I'm also a filmmaker. I'm also a producer. I'm also a writer. I got credit. Check your boy out. My wife is an actress and a model. She was on a music video, and I met her. If we had not been in our purpose, if we had not been in our dreams, we would have never met each other. So, fellas, that is the really, those four C's will get you ready. But the truth is, being in your dream, having a purpose, having a dream, is really where you will find or attract your dream girl. Any response? You're not getting any, any love in there? Okay. 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 Here we go. I want you guys to know something. Because when you find her, there is a cost. No matter who you end up with, there's a cost. Relationships cost. And I'm not just talking from a financial standpoint. Especially these guys who want this woman who's beautiful, attractive, those type of things, if that's what you're into. No matter who you with, there's a cost to be in that relationship. There's a cost of yourself. There's a cost of your will. There's a cost of some of your purpose. There's a cost of those things. 
And you got to ask this question. Can you afford it? Are you really ready to be with somebody? We have all these people trying to find somebody to be with because they really are scared of being alone because they don't know who they are and they don't like being around themselves. Trying to Listen, nothing brings out loneliness than being with someone when you're not ready because that will bring out more loneliness, more toxicity than ever before. There are a lot of people that are in relationships that are more lonely than they were when they were single. You got to be ready to uh, pay the cost. Because if you bring this young lady into your life, God hates returns. You better stop opening up the door to these relationships, man, because they look good and you don't re- you can't afford it. You're not ready to afford the price of being with someone who's attractive. You understand what I'm saying? Because she is a gift, not a prize. Let me tell you something, ladies, fellas. Women are a gift. They're not a prize. We treat them like prizes, like they some type of award for something that we've done for our accomplishment. They are not prizes, fellas. They are gifts from God. You understand what I'm saying? She has a dream. She has purpose. She has feelings, emotions, and she got flaws. Just like you. And if you're not ready to deal with her dreams, her purpose, her feelings, her emotions, and her flaws, do not open up a door to somebody you're not ready to pay for. Because I told you, God don't like returns. He don't like you taking someone's life with all these folks, false hopes and ambitions and lies and lower down her guard just so you can try to sleep with her, have sex with her, and you have no intention of paying the cost that it takes to be with a woman. You don't care how she looks like. Women are not prizes. They are gifts. They are God's daughters. And men, we have to stop bringing these women into our world when we, not, we don't have a plan, we don't have a dream, and we're not ready to pay the cost to be with these women. We are ruining too many lives. We are having these. We are creating too many single parents, too many single mothers. We are destroying our women. And then what happens is their beauty becomes a curse because a lot of women start resenting looking beautiful because it's attracting men who all they want to do is open up the package, but they don't want to take the gift home. You heard what I said? They just want to open up the package, but they don't want to take the gift home. So they open up the box a little bit, play with the gift inside, and then they try to wrap the gift back up and give it to somebody else because they get done with it. It's time out for that. Before you try to attract anybody, understand that these women are gifts, not prizes. Lust is never satisfied. When you start chasing out the women, let me tell you something. I tell my friends this. Every year, a whole bunch of women turn 18 years old around the world. You know what that means? Because your woman fine, they don't mean that they stop making fine women. Listen, I got a beautiful wife. Gorgeous. Love her. Best thing that ever happened to me. But we understand. We live in Miami, South Beach. People walk around here all the time. This, I mean, this is the home of the BBLs. Even the mannequins out here look thick. Lust is never satisfied. So please make sure you're ready to pay the cost to be with somebody. Because just because she fine, you're not going it's not gonna stop you from lusting at the other people. So don't open up these doors that you're not ready to close that one behind you. That's why we're taught I'm not into polygamy and all that other stuff that they try to push. Because you're never gonna satisfy lust. You barely, I tell people, one woman is enough because we barely know how to deal with one woman the correct way. And then we want to bring in a whole other set of emotions, feelings. Now, that's just your boy. And that's what I believe in the word of God. But that's a whole other subject. I want to know, why do you even desire a wife? I want to go a little bit biblical before we get done. Is I want you to understand what this is all about. At the end of the day, why, men, you have this desire that's in you to even want to be with somebody, all right? I'm going to give you something from the Bible that will kind of help you understand 
what this is all about anyway. It's not just hormones. It's not just testosterone. It's not just those things. It's a reason why God put that desire in you in the first place. And this is why I went through this presentation, this workshop, because I want to make sure you ready, really ready for what God really is putting in you. If you are desiring to be with somebody, here we go. Here's the scripture. Malachi 2.15 from the Amplified Version. And did not God make you and your wife one flesh? Did not one make you and preserve your spirit alive? And why did God make you two one? Because he sought a godly offspring from your union. Therefore, take heed to yourself and let no one deal treacherously and be faithless to the wife of his youth. Wife. Not wives, for those who want to believe that polygamy, even though in the Bible God allowed certain things to happen, it wasn't because that was his best. It was because he was trying to help men, and he gave men rule and dominion, and they did what they wanted to do. But his very best was one wife. And you know why? It's because he wants godly offspring. God wants a family. God wants a family, people. And men, he's put this in you, this desire to be married, this desire to have a family, because he wants you to lead his family, his children, his godly offspring. This is why you have this desire right now to be with someone. I wanted to give you guys what it took. Make sure you was right in the spirit. Make sure you understood what this was all about, because at the end of the day, it's about God and his family. And he wants you to have a godly family. You hear me? So the question is, are you ready to be the man God needs you to be to lead his family? You understand what I'm saying, brothers? It's not about what you want. If he is, do you, do you want to really be a family man? Do you really want to find that wife? Do you really want to be attracted to your dream girl? It has to be because you want to lead his family. You want to produce godly offspring for his kingdom. You understand what I'm saying? Now, men, I want to tell you this. If you are ready to be the man God needs you to be, to lead his family, if you really truly desire in your heart, if you believe right now in your heart that he is calling you to be married, to find that woman of your dreams, I want to make sure that you're ready to be the man he needs you to be to lead his family. Some of you have been chasing after women, but he wants you to chase after him. Some of you have been lusting after women, but he wants you to lust after his word. He wants you to have that love with him first. Because before you can lead another woman, before you can really give love to another woman, you have to be filled with love. And God is love. So if you are a man on this call today, and this is for anybody who's ready, who's really ready, women too, women that are on this line too, if you're ready to be who God wants you to be, to have his family, to live for him, to produce godly offspring, and you do not belong to the kingdom of God, you are not in the kingdom. I'm not talking about a religion. I'm not talking about Christianity, which is a religion. I'm, listen. This world is getting dark. Life is fleeting every day. And it's way more important for you to be ready to meet him than it is for you to meet the woman of your dreams or the man of your dreams. And so right now, as a man of God, I want to lead those who want to be led today to the kingdom of God. I want you to say this with me. If you're ready. I want you to pray this with me. You can either do it now or do it later. I want you to say, Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn my sins and invite you to come into my heart in life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior, in the name of Yahshua, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. That right there was worth you staying on this call. That right there was worth you 
tuning in to this message today. If you don't remember, guys, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please, guys, you know, like if this has been a blessing to you, again, support our mission. Support what we do as content creators. Support it. And um, if you guys have any questions right now, also let you guys know something before I forget. Um, the thing about attraction, the thing about finding someone to be with, um, God has blessed me as a film producer. If you see me on uh, IMDb credits, I have a couple of films that was out, some that was actually in the movie theaters. Um, this film right now is on Amazon Prime. It is about relationships. It is called Friends, Family, and Lovers. Please, y'all check it out. Tell me what y'all think. It's funny. It talks about relationship. It talks a lot about the situation of a man who didn't feel like he was enough to find his dream girl. This movie is all about that. Please check that out on Amazon Prime. Tell me what y'all think. And thank you guys for being on this Zoom. I know we definitely went over 30 minutes, but I feel like it was worth it. Does anybody have any questions or answers that they want to ask Do you or a comment that you want to give for the next minute or two? Uh, my wife will read it. Please let me know. This has been a blessing to you guys at all. We have a question from Sean Russell. Yes. He asks, how do you balance charisma and immaturity? Ooh, good question, Sean. Um, you really... Technically, you can you can have a charisma in your immaturity, but you were going to attract immaturity. You want to have charisma in your maturity um, because being silly and, and playful and things like that, um, it's not really immature. Um, it's really your thought process. The Bible says when I was a child, I thought as a child, I spoke as a child, and I understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now, when you become a man, that doesn't mean you don't have fun. Immaturity, really, Sean, is not knowing when to stop, not knowing how far to go, not knowing how to read someone's temperament before you uh, pour out your charisma on somebody. So that's really what you really want to focus on is the, the maturity of how to use your charisma because you can have charisma but if there's immaturity in there you can turn a woman off with it and she can't and she won't even see your charisma no more because she's so focused on your immaturity so i would say learn uh tact how to be tasteful and learn how to um, be able to pour it on in the right and appropriate time and that's going to take practice and that's going to take you really knowing the person that you are around to really know how to make that work any more questions on Right. We have a question from Kendall Timmons. Yes. For better, for worse, which part, I'm sorry, let me repeat that. For better, for worse is part of your vows. What is your worst? Um, my worst, personally, now it's going to be different for everybody, but my worst was when my wife out, I pushed my wife to, to, for, to file for divorce in 2020 because of my insecurities my toxicity. That was my worst. Um, I was not a narcissist, but I had narcissistic traits. And I pushed my wife, who loved me, who was trying to make it work. And I pushed her to a limit. Thank God, God brought her back. And that's how we was able to really help a lot of couples, because we got to the point of divorce, and we was able to work our way back. And that's one of the reasons why we do what we do, is because marriage is a serious thing, man. It's very complicated. Marriage is one of the most complicated relationships um, other than salvation on this earth. And you're going to need coaching and counseling and help in order and, and support in order to really make it through. So that was my worst point, is being so toxic that I pushed my wife away to divorce. That was my worst. Yeah, any more questions? All right. All right, good people. Thank you, guys. Y'all hear my son, Cameron. He is ready for Daddy to shut this party down. And, um, again, like I said, I hope this has been a, a blessing to you guys. I hope you got something from this. Um, we appreciate it. We love you guys. My wife will have one on Wednesday. 
We will be pushing that out shortly. This is going to be for women. It's called Love or Lust. So if you own here, if you want to know the difference between love or lust and how to be able to know if you're in a relationship that is ruled by love or lust, you want to be watchful for her workshop this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Yes, go ahead. Another question. Request from Sean Russell. How do I meet with you man-to-man -man in marriage? Um, Sean, that's a blessing. You guys, if you go to our link tree, uh, we have a link tree. Um, in our bio, you can set up a free Zoom coaching session with us. Also, we are going to be having a workshop that's going to come out at the, on October 5th and 6th. It's a two-day workshop. Um, it is a paid workshop, but it's very reasonable. We're going to be telling you secrets to why marriages, three biblical reasons to why marriages are failing that are normally never talked about on uh, in the church. They're not talked about online. God gave me three reasons why it's failing from a biblical standpoint and how to fix it fast. So you definitely want to be looking out for that workshop. It's an amazing investment. It's a workshop, so you guys are going to be doing some work with us. Um, but other than that, if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one with me and my wife, make sure you go to our link tree and fill out uh, our marriage assessment form, and you'll be able to set up a, a coaching session with me. Okay? I'll be more than happy to help. We good? All right, guys. It's been a blessing. I want you guys to be safe. Uh, remember, man, welcome to the kingdom. If you prayed that prayer with me and reach out to us. Um, if you guys have any questions or concerns, we love you. We'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.